What's up guys, it's James from Fish Steaks and today we're going to do something a little bit different for this channel and we're going to look at the new operator that's just dropped with Rainbow Six's Shadow Legacy. It is of course the one and only Sam Fisher. So we're running this on console and this is going to be more of a console centric guide to Sam and how to use Sam but one of the things you might not know is um, I'm actually a huge huge Splinter Cell fan have been since the originals way back so this might be a little bit of a different look to what you might see on other videos i'm gonna look at how he compares to sam fisher uh the character that we know and love as well as how he plays in rainbow six siege and how best to use him and how i feel about that as a splinter cell fan so without further ado let's have a jump in and take a look he is the only operator that's come with shadow legacy which i think is the first time correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's the first time uh, on a content drop for Rainbow Six Siege that we've seen in a new season, only one operator come to the game. But it is what it is this time. It is Sam Fisher, so I guess that's a big deal. Um, if you're viewing this as a Splinter Cell fan, maybe it's your first time coming to Rainbow Six. And you're wondering what the deal is with Sam Fisher and Rainbow Six. Hopefully this is the kind of video for you. If not, if you just want to know how Sam plays, you might be waiting for the, uh, the paywall to lift on the season pass. Again, I'm going to cover... All of that, I'm going to cover his gadget, what it does, and his weapons. So, without further ado, we'll jump into loadout first. See exactly what you're going to be running. So, first things first, primary weapons. We've got the SC-3000K and the MP7. Now, the SC-3000, if you're a Splinter Cell fan, you'll know it better as the SC-3K. That's how it was familiarly known in the Splinter Cell series. And it is, of course, Sam Fisher's signature gun. I believe it's modeled off an F2000 in real life. But that's what we're running anyway. So you've got the SC3K, you've got the MP7. The MP7, I believe, is Bandit's weapon. So if you run Bandit, you'll be used to that. However, if you're going to be playing as Sam, um, I'm, I just bear in mind I'm going to be calling him Sam throughout this video. I don't like the name Zero, but we'll get to that later. Um, if you're playing as Sam, you're going to want to run the SC3K anyway. Here's why. First of all, scope we've got a range of selections on the scope you've got your red dot your holographic your reflex we've got the 1.5 and the 2.0 now i'm gonna say run the 2.0 if you play siege a lot you'll know that having um essentially the acog was a huge advantage so you're gonna want to run the 2.0 now that's one of the new sites um that we've got that's dropped with shadow legacy if you want to know more about the specific details of Shadow Legacy and what that's brought to the game in terms of the update, please stay tuned on this channel. Hopefully we'll have a video out soon that will cover the new hard breach, the new scopes, the new ping system, and all of that. So stay tuned for that. But this is going to be specifically an operator guide on Sam. So you want to run your 2.0 scope for your ACOG, essentially. Your flash hider will keep your um, recoil down to a minimum. Vertical grip again. The recoil on the barrel you only, the only option you get as always is the laser sight which nobody uses visualization obviously do what you want uh secondary weapon you got the 57 usg should be familiar with that um nothing special about it really comes standard with the silencer of course it's sam fisher it has to so sam in terms of gadgets he can run a frag grenade or a claymore i personally would recommend the frag He's quite a heavy frag character, to be honest with you. The AR puts out a lot of damage. The frag itself. I like I like a frag in Rainbow Six. Um, I feel like with the Claymore, you have to have a lot slower approach. You know, if you're a, a fast-paced player, which I feel like Sam is built to be, then I would run with the frag. All right, we're going to jump into a custom game on the new map, uh, the new rework map, Chalet, which came with Shadow Legacy. If you'd like a more detailed look at this map, the changes made to it, the changes made to the game overall with Shadow Legacy, please stay tuned. We've got a video coming out soon that will hopefully detail all of that for you. But this is going to be more of a look at Sam Fisher, how best to play him in my opinion, and uh, what he offers to Siege. Okay, first things first, um, the new scope, how it looks, it's nice and clean, I quite like it. Um, they've removed a lot of the bulk around the side. I know that's crazy me saying it when you look at the top left there, but I do think it's quite a clean looking scope, uh, especially compared to the ACOG. Yeah, I like it. Those kind of things will be discussed in a lot more detail in our upcoming Shadow Legacy video. This is going to focus a little bit more specifically on Sam Fisher and 
mostly on the Argus launcher, his his the new gadget basically that's come to siege. Okay, so one of the first things you'll notice when you pull the Argus launcher out is this new crosshair, which has got sort of this up arrow and the down arrow. Um, if you're wondering what that means, essentially, so Sam shoots a camera out with this Argos launcher. It drills into a surface and holds in place. It's basically similar to the Valk cam, but you, you shoot it out of a gun. Now, what these arrows mean are Sam's camera, one of its unique features is it can view both sides of a surface. So, for example, we're at, the, we're at a garage here, we're at the garage door, and you can, if you want, shoot a cam on here. And the fact that right now on the crosshair we can see an up arrow and a down arrow, that means if we shot a camera on this surface, it would be able to rotate through the surface and see both sides. Now if I move that to a surface such as this this pillar, we're not going to be able to, you'll, you'll notice there's only a down arrow because the camera will only be able to look this way towards me. And that's it. Just to give you an example of that, I'll shoot a cam on there and I'll shoot a cam on the door. And then if we jump into Sam's cams, so this is the one on the door. You can see we've got a nice view into the garage. And if you hit A, you can view the other side. There we are right there. Um, if we switch camera, so this is the one we shot on the pillar. You'll notice it does not say hit A to swap both sides. So, cool thing about Sam's camera is it can stick to any surface it doesn't have to be any specific type of surface reinforced or otherwise it can stick to any surface obviously bear in mind as I've just explained if the surface is not double sided then you cannot rotate through so there's there's a couple of ways that we could play Sam we could play him essentially as a hard breach support which essentially means you know for Sam's cam we'd be able to get rid of anything blocking a hard breach like uh a bandit or a mute jammer something like that so if we switch to our cam that's looking over the garage let's say the bomb was down here they had defensive setups obviously you'd need a better placement than this if it was if they'd electrified the, the garage door but for example sam's gadget it can shoot a laser right it can only shoot one single laser so you have to be very careful how you play that now if you want one of the ways to use sam would be to get a solid placement um, remember it's double sided so you're probably going to want to look at something like here get above the roof so that you could shoot down um, so you're looking at you know getting solid placement for it and you could take out say a mute jammer or a bandit gadget anything like that any sort of gadget can be shot out we're talking alibi holograms anything um, and that is one way to play Sam so again you could stick one there remember any surface walls floors ceilings anything it is a great little gadget and again double-sided where we see the thing so now we've got a good view into garage is where we had our other camera placed so imagine they'd electrified that you know your, your gadget would be here or you might see a mute jammer trying to stop drones coming through in the vent there bam you know shoot it out job done that's one way to play as them okay guys so the other way to play some and the way that i recommend if you're not solo queuing is information gathering essentially so if you solo queue i feel like with the lack of um the lack of communication with your team it's probably better to run sam as a hard breach support help clear electrified walls or help clear out gadgets help your team breach in and rush the objective however if you are playing with a team and you've got that ability to talk to your team information is the key in rainbow six as you probably already know and sam is a brilliant operator for gathering information so how best to use the argus launcher well as i've already mentioned the argus launcher can stick to any surface right you'll know if it can go if it can penetrate a surface and see to the other side if you get the double arrows so obviously this wall you cannot this back wall you could right so what does that mean exactly? Well, this can stick to any surface. Let's imagine this has been reinforced. Bam, we could get a cam on there. But one of the nice things about Sam, I think, is, you know, it, let's say we play him as a... As essentially an attacking Valk, right? So we've got... You know, we could we could shoot one up here. Now we've, we've essentially got a default cam as an attacking operator. They're also pretty hard to see um because they don't glow they don't flash like art cams and they're you know they're a dark black so they're hard to see when they're high up like that but also you know let's stick one here we can see we could rotate that we get a view into the garage let's say they're down there we could get one 
We could get one up here. We could see down there. By the way, I love the noise it makes. It's the noise of the goggles turned on in Splinter Cell is the noise the Argus launcher makes when the camera activates, which is is beautiful. Just hearing that go off as we're playing Rainbow Six is going to be awesome. Um, you know, but anyway, anywhere you want it, anywhere maybe where there's default cams or just where you want to get a good view. You know, it's always good to get a view of this. And again, we've got a default camera here. Maybe we want to stick on there and get our own view as an attacker. You know, you might be down here looking upstairs, and you might want to say. Well, let's get a view up there. Bam. You know, your whole team's got that. Now, again, you've got four cameras, so you want to get all four down. It would be like playing as Valk and not putting your cams down. Support your team as much as possible and get those cameras down. Now, how exactly is this going to affect the game? Well, if we jump now to our cams, here's the one we just placed. This is like, again, we're on attack. We've got a default cam again. It's a default cam with a laser that we can use. It only gets one shot and it's not going to kill someone. It could kill someone if they're weak enough, but it's not going to kill a guy. So, in my opinion, it's really not worth it. I mean, let's say there was an alibi hologram up on the in the hallway or something. Maybe you want to shoot that out. Fair play. Otherwise, just use it to gather information. You can still scan for enemies and ping from the camera with the new ping system, which again... Um, will hopefully be covered in the other video on Shadow Legacy coming soon. Please stay tuned for that. But yeah, so essentially, attacking team have now got default cams if Sam puts his cams in the right place. They're also harder to see because the team is not going to look, at least for now, early weeks, default cam locations. They're going to expect Sam to play as hard breach support, I would say. Here's one of our other cams in default location. We've got a nice view of the lobby now. This is the cam that we put in garage, right? Above garage. Now again, let's say they were down here. They might have a mute jammer. They might have whatever. You could shoot that out if you want. It pays to put this kind of thing down here just because I feel like people are going to be looking at walls. They're going to be looking at anything obvious like the, the actual garage door they're going to be looking at. And this thing makes a noise when it goes off. As I explained, it makes the little goggle turn on noise from Splinter Cell. Um, the little poop. So they're going to hear that. They're going to know straight away there's a cam in here. If, you, if you're playing hard beat support, you want to put them down in strategic locations like the, the ceiling. Shoot out your device because the camera's getting shot out straight away. So you've got to be quick with that kind of thing. Um, which is why I honestly recommend just using them as an information gatherer. Trying to get default cam spots as an attacker. Or your own spots. If you play Valk regularly, you'll know the good Valk spots. Start using Sam as an attacking Valk if you want. If you have a, a Valk player on your team... Get to know those spots, learn those spots on the different maps, and honestly, play some the same way. Because, I mean, what an advantage that's going to be for an attacking team to have all those cameras. Again, I know one of the huge advantages with Sam is that his, Sam, his, his camera can rotate through different surfaces. But I do think playing him as, as an essentially cam setup on attack is a much safer option. You know, you put them in a place where, let's say you put it on the bomb site. They're defending it here on B. You put one on the wall here. Because um, it can rotate. We're outside here. We bust this window. We've got an angle right. We put our Argus launcher here. We can now see through both sides of the wall, yeah? Depending on where they are, if they hear that, that go off, it's getting shot out right away. So is it worth it? Probably not. Is it worth it up there? I think so. I think, you know, we get a good view now of the staircase. We get intel for our, us as an attacking team on the staircase which is going to be a huge benefit now again we've got something like this here right we've got a view into the bomb room right we're on the ceiling it's less obvious than putting it on a wall and yes they will hear it and it might very well get shot out here the benefit to putting it here is yes it's less likely that they're going to see it but also you flip it around to view the other side you get a 360 camera up here as well so these things it has essentially 360 rotation in every direction on both sides, which is is such an advantage as an attacking team now to have this information. So I absolutely recommend you play Sam as an intel gatherer rather than hard breach support, unless you're playing solo queue or you're with the team that don't communicate. I feel like solo. I feel like hard breach support is a little bit more selfish, whereas obviously playing as an intel gatherer benefits the team greatly, and it's going to be a huge, huge difference and siege going forwards i think in attacking teams i think sam's going to come up a lot and he's going to be a very valuable player to attacking teams in terms of information gathering i want to just look over what gear ubisoft are offering us with sam if you're a, if you're a fan of sam fisher and you're a fan of splinter so you might want to know um so first things first let's jump into the head gear we start with default sam 
it's kind of a rugged older Sam. There's a little bit of backstory to why he's sort of joined Team Rainbow. Um, it's a post-retirement Sam, and that's kind of the new look that they're going with with him, I guess. I don't think it looks that much like Sam Fisher, I've got to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's not terrible. I actually do prefer it to um, his current Epic skin, the 4th Echelon skin, which you get if you have the Season Pass. Now, the reason I'm running 4th Echelon skin is because you get the signature goggles with it. Now, as a Splinter Cell fan, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this skin. Now, it is quite clearly based off of the double agent Sam Fisher, where he shaved his head. Oddly, they've called it 4th Echelon, which would be the Blacklist Sam Fisher, where he, he did have hair, he grew his hair back, so I'm not sure why it's called 4th Echelon, but then they've gone with the double agent look. But it is what it is. Um, there's not much more to say about that, other than not sure where they were going with it but i like the fact that he's got the signature goggles on his head so i've got to run with the fourth echelon um we've also got the shadow legacy uh goggles that came with the shadow legacy bundle there's a few skins in the bundle that you can get for a few different characters this is sam's for whatever reason they're bright orange again it's really not a sam fisher thing so pff, i'm staying well away from that one i have to say um in terms of uniform We've got the default uniform. It kind of gives me a Splinter Cell Conviction vibe. Again, with the, with the default face as well, it really does feel like a Conviction look that they're going for with them. And if we come over to the 4th Echelon look, I have no idea where they're getting this from. It's absolutely not 4th Echelon. Sam's 4th Echelon was a full-on stealth suit. Um, this is just a guy in an overcoat. A lot of it's green as well. It's not even camo or... You know, he wore digital camo in in Blacklist, which was 4th Echelon. It's not even that. So I, I really... It's very confusing that they've called it 4th Echelon. But again, is what it is, I guess. It's much better than the Shadow Legacy bundle uniform, which again is bright orange. Some sort of like... <laughs> Over-the-top Division-esque look. Um, what I will say is, on the default skin you've got the goggles on the back of the bag there that's actually on every skin but yeah if you don't like the fourth echelon head you will at least get the goggles on the back i'm running fourth echelon head and default skin just because it's black it's all black and then i get the goggles on my head so that's my personal choice but i thought if you were a splinter cell fan you might want to see that um there is one more option available to you if you were to crack on with uh shadow legacy right now and grab the battle pass Give yourself time to work your way up there. And we want to take a look. Come right to the end of the scale. And by the way, there's a few nice skins in this um, in this battle pass. But if we come right to the end of the scale, we've got headgear for essentially the, the default Sam. They're calling it the detection headset. And it's the classic goggles on the default Sam skin, which I think is probably the best option. But it's going to be a lot of work to get yourself up to 66. So get yourself started now. Alright guys, just to close this out, I want to give my opinions on what I think uh, about Sam coming to Rainbow Six as a, as a diehard Splinter Cell fan. Um, how I feel about the interpretation of him. So first of all, I think it, it's great that he's come to Rainbow Six. I'd take any excuse to play as Sam again. is awesome. But um, how happy am I with him? It could certainly have been done better. The sort of post-retirement Sam interpretation that they've gone with, to me, it really doesn't look like Sam Fisher. They don't have Michael Ironside doing the voice in the reveal trailers or anything like that, which is kind of a shame. They got him for the Ghost Recon stuff, but they couldn't get him for this. Seems strange to me. Is it accurate to the Sam Fisher that we know and love? Not really, honestly. He's a two-speed operator, two-armor operator. I would have put him as a three-speed, one-armor operator. For me, that would be Sam Fisher. Um, fast, but deadly silent you know the two armor and the two speed i feel like it just doesn't feel right to me but i guess you know he's an older more grizzled veteran sam and maybe that's what they're going with with it i don't know it feels very conviction to me which i know is one of the least preferred games among splinter cell fans but it is what it is this is what we've got seeing the the sc3k I think is amazing. I love its inclusion in the game. It looks like it's going to be a great gun as well. Very similar to the AK if you like running AKs. Um, I think it's going to be one for you. Sam himself as a character in Siege is going to be absolutely phenomenal. I think he's going to change the game. Uh, but as a Splinter Cell fan, I just think it could have been done a little bit better. The epic 4th Echelon skin that they've given us 
gives us that double agent feel, which is a little better. It feels a little bit more like Sam Fisher, but it's just not the one that I wanted. I really, really hope that when they make his elite skin, whenever that will be, of course, it's going to be a long time off. I really hope what they give us is a third echelon full stealth suit style Sam Fisher. That would be, that would, I mean, it would just be perfect. That's what I want. It's all I can hope for. I mean, this is a first person shooter. We're never getting the Sam Fisher we really want, but you know, that would be better than, than nothing. In terms of the Argus launcher, does it feel like a Sam Fisher gadget? Yes, I think it does. I think it's very, very similar to the Sticky Cam. If you've played the Splinter Cell games, you'll know the Sticky Cam. It, it's one of his trademark gadgets, and it feels exactly like one of them. There was one that could shoot a little taser, which is kind of what the Argus launcher is like, I guess. The laser's similar to it. Um, it, the sticky cams never really made any noise unless you wanted them to. You wanted to use them for distraction, they could make a noise, but other than that, they were silent. So I don't really like that it makes a noise, but yes, they do have to balance it for Rainbow Six. So, overall opinions on it as a Splinter Cell fan, I think it's good enough. I think it certainly could have been done better, but I also understand its shortcomings because it's Rainbow Six, because it needs balancing, and because a silent ninja that kills everyone and is never seen would be... It would break the game, let's face it. I do think the advantage Sam gives the attacking team in terms of intel gathering, though, is going to be huge. It's going to change the way Siege is played. And I'll be very, very interested to see how people perform with Sam going forwards. Um, but yeah, that should round us out for our look at Sam Fisher on console and Shadow Legacy. And guys, if you want to learn more about the changes, to Rainbow Six console with Shadow Legacy, the new Harbridge, the new scopes, the new ping system, all of that. Please stay tuned for our Shadow Legacy video, which should be coming out soon. Thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Matane.